Shoot, you little dog. Which side do you want? Hi, right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, but little bit windy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I think it is the first day of spring. It's either the last day of winter or the first day of spring 2022, which will be Sunday, March 20th. And speaking of the collapse, guys, this little camera, my little Canon point and shoot camera is probably on its last legs. If anybody out there has one of these little Luddite safe little, you know, these little digital cameras, the pre-smartphone cameras that used to be a dime a dozen, just lying around somewhere. I could really, really use one of these. Uh, or otherwise, there's going to be quite a long break in uh, Collapse Chronicles. But anyway, as long as this camera is running now, I think... We're a dollar short and a day late for this week's Hopium Roundup. Uh, so I guess I'm going to send this out as Hopium to the people down there in Australia. Uh, we haven't talked about Noah very often, so this is, uh, y y y you know, I, I guess that Noah was the biggest apocalyptimist in the history of humanity uh, <clears throat> just in case you've forgotten about this working around three th this is the mainstream media news this is in the news so it's got to be true if you read it in the mainstream media news you know it has to be true uh, working around 3000 BC Noah was 600 years old when God told him to build a ship, yes, Noah took 100 years to build the ark. You know, we thought that you're looking at supply chain issues now. Imagine being a 600-year-old man waiting around for 100 years to get your lumber. Uh, Good Lord, and we bitch about supply chain issues. 100 years this 600-year-old man took to build his ark and load it with two of every creature on planet Earth in it before a 40-day rain flooded the Earth and killed everything. Yes, but the reverends Mike Hanks and Terry Pugh say the most notable thing about Noah was his faith. Quote, after the end of the flood, God gave a rainbow and said he would not destroy the earth again that way. All right, so we have a promise. Uh, thank you, Noah. For saving uh, everything, this you know when your back is against the wall, you think it is all doom and gloom. Just remember that 600-year-old man spending 100 years building that boat, loading it with two of every single species of our fellow Earthling, and God says we will not die that way again. So we will see uh, what he comes up with. But speaking of Noah, this is as close as we've got now is the Pope. This is Pope Francis evokes specter of nuclear war wiping out humanity. So right there is uh, some real hopium. Yes, maybe nuclear war will wipe out humanity. Um, <clears throat> Pope Francis on Wednesday evoked the specter of a nuclear war where whoever is left of humanity 
would have to start all over again on the day after. Yes. Um, oh, this is where it was. This was uh, the 85-year-old. 85 years old, he's a spring chicken compared to Noah. Told the biblical story of the great flood uh, <clears throat> that God used to punish a sinful and corrupt humanity. Yes. Uh, quote, Our imagination appears increasingly concentrated on the representation of of a final catastrophe that will extinguish us. Yes, such as that which would happen with an eventual atomic war. The day after, if there will still be days and human, human beings, we will have to start again from nothing. Yes. So, uh, there you go. I guess that's, uh, yep. I guess that's, uh, hopium. Or is that popium? We call that popium. Okay. Let's get back to the, uh, to the little greenies. The little greeny uh, techno utopian saving the planet. <clears throat> Copper is back big in Arizona and will power the clean economy. The clean economy will occur with electric vehicles, wind and solar power, and enhanced battery storage. And the indispensable ingredient of energy storage is copper. Yes. A cleaner, decarbonized economy simply cannot happen without more copper. <clears throat> For example, one average electrical electric vehicle uses 200 pounds of copper. One solar panel contains 5.5 tons of copper per megawatt. Wind farms require copper, as does energy transmission, meaning all of these uh, transmission lines to save the planet. But the current and projected global copper supply is insufficient to power this transition to clean energy. Yes, the clean energy future has a mineral roadblock. Yes, shortages have already resulted in a doubling of copper prices in the last two years and demand for copper will grow by 50% in the next 20 years. Yes. And the price escalation drives the cost of the clean energy transition higher. Yes. Goldman Sachs has called the situation a molecule crisis and concluded that without more copper, the clean energy economy will not happen. Enter Arizona. The copper state is back. Yes. Arizona is going to uh, save the planet uh, one mine, the Resolution Mine, will produce up to 25% of America's copper needs. Yes. Meanwhile, producers are developing other deposits. 
The copper triangle is rich in copper. Yes. Anyway, the state of Arizona is going to save the uh, clean economy by literally mining the state of Arizona to save the planet. We are going to save the planet by eating the planet. All right. Uh, but don't forget nuclear power saving the planet from fossil fuels. But of course we have that pesky problem of nuclear waste and where and how to store it. But do not worry, this crazy underground tomb, this crazy underground tomb will store nuclear waste for 100,000 years. All right. Finland, thank you, Finland, will store nuclear waste in a new underground tomb starting in 2024. The tomb is located, the tomb is located deep beneath the rural village of Yerjoki. The permanent, the permanent nuclear disposal site is called Onkalo which is Finnish for deep pit. If nothing goes wrong within the next couple of years, if nothing goes wrong within the next couple of years, the site will become home to spent uranium fuel rods encased in copper casks for the next 100,000 years. All right. Thank you, Finland, for solving that little, that little uh, problem. Yes, there are over 400 uh, nuclear power plants located throughout the world yet we still do not have a permanent nuclear disposal site. Yes. Japan even has plans to dump nuclear waste into the ocean. Hmm. While these storage options work well for a short time, having a permanent place to store this dangerous waste is what it's all about. Yes. Anyway, solved that problem. All right. But speaking of underground tombs, here is uh, definitely uh, one for the apocalyptic billionaires. Hundreds of people from France to Saudi Arabia have inquired about this luxury bomb shelter that cost up to $500,000 since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Yes. Uh, since the invasion of Ukraine, Artemis Protection has received 500 quote requests and 15 orders. Uh, the bunkers cost anywhere from $160,000 to over $500,000 as underground shelter manufacturers are reporting a surge in customer inquiries since Russia invaded Ukraine including Artemis Protection, a high-end bunker company based in France. And there you go. Here is your high-end uh, a 236 square foot. 236 square feet that is roughly a 10 by 24. A 10 by 24 bunker 
Uh, starting at three hundred thousand dollars, so you can live out your the nuclear holocaust in luxury. But just in case we uh, we don't have a nuclear holocaust in the next few weeks, and you're worried about climate chaos. Do not worry, we are not doomed to climate chaos. Right here in the mainstream media, we are not doomed to climate chaos. Climate change is a problem. It is a problem for people, but we already have the technology we need to mitigate and adapt to climate change in a manner that brings about sustainable development. Yes. Anyone following discussions of the recently released IPCC report could be forgiven for believing that we are doomed to climate change. But, in fact, this report did not say that. I know that because I was a lead author. This is Dr. Carr. I love Dr. Carr being the lead author of a uh, Edward Carr. Dr. Carr being a lead author of a uh, IPCC report. We found that we can get on to clear pathways to a climate resilient future for everyone. Yes. Oh, God. And promote a sustainable future of decent living standards and opportunity for all. There is substantial evidence that changing the politics and norms around who participates in climate action enables such connections and working on these challenges at the local level produces solutions tailored to specific opportunities and needs that can aggregate up to global impacts. Yes, this is not a message of catastrophe. Blah, blah, blah. I'm wrapping it up. Dr. Carr's message for the sustainable future. Our message of transformation is a message of urgency and 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 uh, uh, oh. A climate resilient future is still possible. It starts with changing who is in the conversation. <coughs> yes, to better identify the challenges we need to address, the best ways to address them, and the just equitable outcomes we expect from our actions. From these conversations will flow clear rationales for what we need to transform, what we want to keep, and why. This, in turn, will point us to the linked adaptation, mitigation, and sustainable development actions that will work to benefit the widest set of people and communities, states and countries. We are not doomed to climate chaos. Not if we start where we are. Not if we start where we are. And not if we start now. Yes. 
speaking of starting now, it sounds like the uh, airboats, the airboats are starting now to get out there and uh, just burning fossil fuels out their ass, uh, zipping around, scaring wildlife, destroying the peace and quiet of the Point Lonesome Swamp, and saving the planet. Yes, the airboat. The airboat is, it is the poster child of why. Anyway, I have to wrap this up because it is a gorgeous day. I'm uh, actually uh, going to start. I think I'm going to take this damn knee brace off for the first time and, uh, and see if I can bend my knee. If anyone has one of these little cameras to donate, please email me at collapsechronicles at gmail.com because I'm afraid when I turn this little camera off it will never turn on again. Bye guys.